The Maiden's Gospel. Biako's Gospel. She has one. Because she's an Archbishop? Not necessarily. See, I thought that people with, that were Archbishops or had ties to the witches cult had the Gospel. But Betrigus, also known as Juice by Betty, there's a connection there. Why does she have a Gospel? Again, the Gospel seems to be a set of instructions, a guide that Biako is following. Everything that Biako has done has carefully followed that. That's why she didn't bother helping anyone else. That's why she saved a Subaru and then prevented him from killing himself. And it's like, what the hell is going on? And at this point, should we just assume everyone has a gospel? In fact, on my logical inconsistency in how I'm assuming that Roswell hired Elsa in this arc, it does make sense from the whole theory of he's regressing and therefore he's looping a Subaru. But in arc one, it doesn't make sense because he doesn't know who Subaru is. But if we were to then assume that Roswell also has a gospel and is simply listening to instructions, then suddenly not knowing Subaru doesn't matter. Or maybe Roswell is the one that summons Subaru. I don't really know. But at this point, I think it's going to be very fun to just assume every person has a gospel. That's right. Elsa has a gospel. Elsa is simply listening to the guy that the gospel is telling her to do. And that's why she went to the mansion. Mm -hmm. Wasn't hired by, wasn't hired by Roswell. Yep, Frederica also has a gospel. Mm -hmm. Emily, no, everybody has a gospel. Puck has a gospel. The gospel told Puck, can't be interfering. Now, I think the reason that Puck is gone right now has to do with the connection with Echidna, the oath, and how much they interfere and stuff. But I don't know, just really, really interesting thing to, you know, wonder about. Now, the very end of last episode, what happened? Otto saved us. We shit on Otto by laughing at him, but he was actually laughing at himself. Otto clutched, and now Garfield's still coming after us. Like a partial transformation was kind of shown. We've seen Frederica do it, so it's like Garfield might be our next antagonist, man. Let's begin today's reaction. <laughs> Even if you're a granny, you're a hot ram. <laughs> he, she holds the leash. Roswell Sama gave me orders to assist you. Hmm. Very rare that Roswell would try to like help out. Which means that this situation was so fucking dire that even Roswell made a move. That's very rare. He never does that. Remember, at the end of Arc 2, he showed up saying Ul Goa and killed all the witch fiends, but it's very rare when he actually intervenes. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Garfield can't figure it out. Ulto is hiding with the literal fucking brushes. <laughs> and Ram is literally like, bro, really? Like, bro, I. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> the friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Suspicious. Garf can't leave the graveyard while Emil Sama is taking the shrine. <laughs> it's funny because I have no faith that Amelia will clear the trial, but at least now she's kind of useful because Amelia simply attempting trial locks Garfield at the graveyard, which buys us time. So good job, Amelia. You're helping out. <laughs> Clown music. Clown music. A miraculous return, huh? Because you helped me out, bro. Russell, did you know that we get stuck like that? Did you bail us out? How much do you know? Mm. Yep. What was that reaction there? I put off running away for the time being. That's why she let me in here with the other argument. Roswell's reaction. I'm always attentive just to see what, how Roswell's reacting. Can you regress? Do you know about my power? If I have the answer, I will give it to you. But like, how do we ask Roswell that? Do you know that I can return by death? No. Then Satala, like, th th we, we can't do that shit. How do we confirm this? Indirectly. 
ベアトリス魔女教徒なのかノンヤスなぜ教徒だと思ったのかなガスポーベイ金色印象を持ってたもしやさエネミー俺たちの俺の敵になる Our My enemy That was interesting The difference between our here and saying Wait, no, not our My enemy Powerful words The resolve そんなに苦しそうな顔で言っても説得力に<笑> Yeah, I mean he's talking the talk but his facial reaction is telling me that he's hesitating because Biko bro I love Biko, our girl Lolly she helped us out so much in the earlier season but now she's being all emo and shit and then it's going bad I don't want to kill Biko I refuse to believe Biko is a fucking witch's cult member and even if she is I feel like we can still trust her somehow <laughs> We must have fucked up so hard for Roswell to say this. Like, that must have been the worst possible, like, like, I don't know. Like, he definitely does not want Subaru and Biko to be fighting. So he's like, no, 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 no. Okay, let me guide you in the right direction. That's rare. Very rare. Something closely? What do you mean? Okay. It's a black book with the same cover, but it's not a gospel? People making fucking fake gospels out here, bro? What the fuck? And it had instructions. Fake gospel, but it still had like a set of instructions and guides that she was following carefully. Biko's mom created a fake gospel for her? What? Wait, I... Assuming that is where Biko got the gospel from because she hugs and says everything I do is for mother. There's a gospel and there's a magical grammar that tells the true future. They both look alike, but they're not the same. It tells the true future. So Biko, so the, tr the future has already been predetermined? And that makes sense as the guides, right? The guidebooks. Sorry, every time we were talking about the gospel, people always talk about how they're just following the words of the gospel, right? Some kind of guide, a set of instructions. But now that this magical grammar can tell the true future, Biko, all she has to do is just listen to it and then her Destin destination will arrive. What? Okay. Two copies exist. Okay. So we know of gospels, but there's also magical grammars. And there's two true magical grammars that tells the future. And then there is also the tomb of wisdom, which is even better than the two magical grammars. What? The fuck is happening right now? So much lore. Did she not know? Thus, it is even the same name used for the defective versions. At the very top, Tomb of Wisdom. Whatever the fuck that is. But assuming that the true ones that tells the future it's even better in that this is like the holy fucking grail in terms of what the future is then there's two copies that's really close to it then there's the gospels that we have which are defective versions right gospel is the same name for a defective version because the those gospels don't tell the truth and we can't read our gospel so better use has literally wasted his life chasing after Satala. But all the things that he was told to do in the gospel was fake? That is more tragic. Th thank you, Black Thing, for tier one stuff. That is so fucking tragic. Assuming his gospel is fake, unless we have the Tomb of Wisdom. Think about that. Right? I'm assuming that Betrugus' gospel 
is a bad one because it's the same name used for defective versions. But like, what if we have a true copy? I don't fucking know. This is getting crazy though. That's some crazy shit. Ask her the question. Roswell asked. Exactly. I don't blame Subaru for not asking this last episode because like when we got to Beiko's hidden library, everyone died. He was like in a state of panic trying to kill himself so that a checkpoint wouldn't be made, but he missed out an opportunity, man. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. <laughs> Multiple times, right? Multiple times. Because we already had the theory about how fucking careful and cunning he is. He would never let Subaru just fuck shit up, right? Unless he knew Subaru had an unlimited amount of tries. And another thing is, like, Subaru said, well, this time this happened, and Russell was like, oh, this time, huh? Oh, these words are insufficient for you. Okay, okay. Yeah. <sighs> so, like, the words are insufficient is hinting because Subaru, right? Russell's to ask the question. Roswell, right now, in his mind, is assuming that Subaru has already received these instructions from Ram in a different timeline. But maybe it was not enough based on Subaru's reactions. Roswell assumes that it wasn't enough and then gives even more keywords to ask Biko. I am that person. <laughs> Roswell asking to ask the question. I am that person. Is there a prophecy? Is there a chosen one prophecy going on here? Who, who, am, am I that, is Subaru that person? What, what the fuck is going on? Roswell, I already asked Beiko that it didn't work. Can you give me a different one? Hmm. Contracts. Contract between Roswell and Beiko? Well, they have a contract. It was kind of like glossed over, but I thought the contract was Biko simply hides like Roswell's Lolicon Dojins. Like, it was a meme joke back then, but she's clearly in the hidden library to collect secrets, right? On behalf of Roswell. And she can't override it, but if we tell her I am the one, then she's fine? Has Biko been waiting for someone this entire time? I am the one. Roswell said, ask the question. What would have happened if Roswell says, so if we went to Biko and asked her, Roswell said to ask the question, and then would Biko say, are you the one? And then we would have answered, I am the one. Or at least Roswell would have assumed Subaru to say that, but now he's giving us the direct answer. What the fuck is she waiting for? Someone to get her out of the library? Get some fucking touch some grass? I am the one for what? Alright. Imagine he tries this, it doesn't work, he dies, loops, then he shows up and punches Roswell in a fresh timeline. Roswell will be like, I guess he tried it, huh? <laughs> I want to believe he's not our enemy. Even if he's super shady and super suspicious, absolutely. I believe that his desires, his goals to kill the dragon is so great that he would do whatever it takes and would be on our side to get to that goal. Subaru is Roswell's greatest pawn, in my opinion. We're still going with the theory of him regressing along with us, and that's how he's so confident in each failed run. But I also want to add on top of that, beyond the regressing, he also has a gospel that's telling him what to do.
kind of like Bieko as well. Who knows if he has the true one or maybe he has the Tomb of Wisdom. But I think if that's the case, then again, the logical inconsistency of Arc 1 of hiring Elsa to steal the fucking dragon pendants without knowing Subaru, that gets answered if he actually has a gospel that just tells him what to do because now he doesn't need to know who Subaru is. So maybe we're getting somewhere with this. I don't know. The goal right now, to get to Bieko. Rosal told me to ask the question. I am the one. Okay. Also, isn't Garfield literally coming for us right now? Last episode ended with Garfield like partial transformation. Like, I'm scared of Garfield, bro. フレデリカのことはあけど俺たち二人だと。いかにも戦力不足ね。ラムに来てほしいと。エリアレン。ああ、お前が来てくれると心強い。仕方ないわね。お。いいのか。マルスを手助けするように露図は。That is an excuse that she's using to prevent her from telling the truth, which is she actually does want to help Subaru. I know that she cares deep inside. られているのどうやって？治療はいいと。ラムたちは三人よ。Oh. <laughs> Even if you're both half a man, you're still one man plus me. It's not enough. Damn, Ram. Jesus Christ. Yes, absolutely. Uh oh. Uh oh. I don't know what you mean. I'm not even from this world. So like immediately going in trial and getting lo like Garfield locked in at the graveyard. That's not even useful anymore. I take it back. You know what I said in the beginning? Oh fucking, oh, Emily can't clear a trial, but at least she has this utility of locking Garfield down in the trial. She can't even fucking do that anymore. God damn it. Eyes? Eyes of the sanctuary. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. You got vision set up everywhere. Is that an idiom? Okay, it's an idiom. <laughs> to go see your sister? <laughs> Ram should be able to just like put Garfield on a leash here, right? But I wonder if Garfield... Like, would he submit to Ram right now? He seems very pissed off. <laughs> Damn, there ain't nothing lovable about you at all. But that's what I like about you. This is the most toxic relationship. <laughs> <laughs> to put it another way, Hoshin was poor idioms, meaning we're fucked right now. I, I, based on Oto's reaction, this is bad right now. Bad idiom. So, is this Hoshin of the wilderness? The third isekai character that Anastasia told us about in the web novel Cut Content, which is called Translation. Hoshin of the Wilderness. Damn! He brought the small nation of Banan to ruin? Well, I'm not sure if that's as impressive as like Regulus going down to take down the fucking Valachian Empire because a meteor of another witch was being spread, but... Banan. Alright, Hoshin Wilderness, bro. Hoshin of the Wild fucking lore. He's that strong, huh? Damn. Oh, he's super serious right now. Okay. Just because I'm hot for you. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to steer around. Okay, even Ram can't make Garfield stand down right now. Regulus took down a city, Hoshin took down a small nation? Okay. Alright, I take it back. Maybe it was a disrespectful to Hoshin. I just thought, like, Regulus took down the entire fucking empire or some shit, but no, 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 no. Okay, Hoshin took down a small nation, Regulus took down a city. Got it, got it. 
の監禁にこだわるな置いとくだけ損だから手放すなら無料の今がおすすめだぞてめえ Sorry, I'm not even focusing right now because I'm theorycrafting in my head about the Hoshin of the Wilderness. Is there a reason Kararagi is so Japanese influenced due to Hoshin of the Wilderness? Because I'm going to assume that he's a Japanese character. He's an isekai Japanese character from Beyond the, Wor Beyond the Great Waterfall. And there's a lot of like Japanese themes, the architecture. Everything seems to be like Japan in, in you know, An in Anastasia's place, Hoshin. Did that make sense? Because Hoshin, his name is literally Hoshin of the Wilderness. Anastasia's literal private army is Hoshin Private Army. He must be such an integral person that's like created the culture in fucking, you know, wherever they live. Maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to. Yes, right now, but let's let's lock him back. I'm really on the Imaga, what's this made us? Hey, me, I don't know, she didn't know you're so to me. That's the working you can. Okay, I don't like him. That the virus was a lot of someone. It's kind of nice. No, the windfall that Roswell has been long awaiting all this time. Subaru is the greatest employee ever, the goat employee, bro. ても<笑> His powers. Did he just summon a shitload of animals and like insects and everything like creatures around to help? Oh, oh, oh. lights. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was using the soul of the language to like help like creatures around to like help, but no, it's just fucking village people. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, by the way, <laughs> this, this woman, guess, guess what the relationship is here? They're not husband and wife. This is the younger brother of the true village lead. And her description is like, although she's very old, she, uh, she abuses her power and felt young when she sexually groped uh, Natsuki Subaru. That's, that's it, bro. And this is the younger brother, bro. Yep, it's a younger brother and big sister here. Yeah, they're siblings. Garfield transformed. Uh. Yo, Frederica was not this big. Garfield, a big cat. Fat cat. I mean, he's living up to his name, it seems like. The sheer size of him right now? <laughs> Does that mean Ram is dead? What happened to Ram? Yeah. I think it's beyond reasoning. Can we reason with this guy? My friend. Otto is such a good character. Season 2 has been really highlighting Otto's character, bro. Like, he is such a good character. Look at that sacrifice he made for his friends. Damn. I think that was just a breath attack, bro. Just shouted and pushed him back. That screech for Garfield sounded like better the goose, you know? This whole scream here reminded me of when he used to scream better the goose. <laughs> are, are, 
Are you guys throwing rocks at him? I, I think people are throwing a little pebble. I'm like, what's happening right now? <laughs> We're cooked. I appreciate the RLM villagers. They're very brave. Nah, nah, don't call them dumb guys. Come on, man. They're regular humans. They're helping out in spite of this giant catwalking. Come on, respect the villagers, although they're not really helping. But hey, it's the thought that counts. And you guys might be despairing. You know what I'm thinking? Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking Garfield's the fucking answer for Elsa, bro. I didn't realize exactly how strong this guy would be. Once we clear the sanctuary, when we can convince these dudes to come with us and fight against Elsa and the Beast Tamer, like, we're good. Like, this is good. To know his true power, this is great. Okay, 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 okay. That was very sad for Patrash. And Subaru's cry for like no one else needs to die but me is really sad because, you know, he can just simply loop, but everyone has to fucking die while everyone's saving him for sure. But that necklace, again, is the same thing that happened. Remember how we were talking about, is it teleporting? Is it not? I'm not really sure. Are we near the barrier right now? I don't know. But the conditions haven't met. And suddenly we teleport into... The witch's graveyard, I'm assuming this is the witch's graveyard again. So, <sighs> Frederica's crystal thing, remember? Like, she used it to transform into her beast form. I'm not exactly sure if the crystals all have the same function, but this happened again, just like in the beginning of the arc. <laughs> yeah, I think it might have been the barrier, maybe? <laughs> this is the jail cellar, not the witch's graveyard. I, I, the ruins, I mean, right? This is where we were locked up, right? Also. Hmm. And this is not him looping, because he has injuries on his... What the f Where the fuck are we? There's snow? Is this Eliar Forest where Emilia is? Emilia's like old fucking family and shit. The elves like, what the? I thought this was the jail cellar that like Garfield put us in, but no, we got ported after coming into contact with the bear with the crystal again, and now snow. Huh? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> is this Eliar Forest where Frozen Bond was held? Petra's luck charm. I have no clue. Maybe it's Elder Forest, maybe it's not. No, it's not even. It's, no, it's literally the same. Why is it snowing? See, I thought it was Elder Forest because it was snowing. It was not snowing before. How long have we been sleeping? <laughs> what the fuck? We're still in the safe. This is where the villagers are camping out at. But there's... And it starts... What? Uh, the only other explanation for the snow is like when Puck's gate... Sorry, it's not the gate. It's the Odo, right? The, uh, the container for the mana went out of control like a memory snow. And everything started snowing, right? Anytime Emilia died in season one, remember how everything just starts snowing because of Puck trying to end the world? But other than that, I have no clue as to why this is start snowing right now. And we know Puck is AFK, this arc. Uh, Puck is gone! Or maybe Emilia did die and Puck finally... <laughs> if Emilia died and Puck finally came out to do this shit, like, you deadbeat motherfucker. <laughs> you can show up when Emilia's a bit, with, with... <laughs> Wait, but like, my understanding of why Puck is AFK right now mostly due to the vow or oath created with Echidna and because we're at the sanctuary where Echidna is, I thought that the interference with the Melia shit, I thought that it was a bit too much and therefore he's AFK, but I don't know.
The soundtrack is very eerie and scary, me, bro. Everything is engulfed in snow. It looks like the end game when Puck fucks shit up. Aww. Usagi? Maybe Oto sent the rabbit to help us. Mr. Rabbit, please help us. Where are we right now? Aww, it's so cute! It was not a cute rabbit. Does it have a horn? It does have a horn. It's a fucking Maju, isn't it? God damn it. That was a fucking jump scare. I mean, we needed something to kill us to loop, but like... <laughs> the immediate transition with the boss theme playing our fingers in his mouth. Holy shit. <laughs> when did our foot get cut off? Wait, our foot too? That might be the most fucked up death so far. Has there been a death that gruesome? Has there ever been a death that gruesome? Like... It's the fact that there's tiny little rabbits biting you. Just nippling you. There's like hundreds of... How many are there? What the f... Oh my god. What time? Okay. 1651 right now. Okay, 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 okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me cook. Let me cook. Y'all remember Frozen? You remember Memory Snow? Okay, 1651 this episode. You remember Memory Snow? Do you remember the, uh... Does anybody remember what this... The Mecha Bunny. And then this break time, remember? Subaru put a horn onto it. And I said in that break time episode, if you put a drill on that shit, it, every Maju has a fucking horn. So break time is literally just fucking teasing. And it calls it a snow... The amount of easter eggs, the amount of hints that they drop in these side stories are fucking unreal, man. It was hinted in memory snow the entire time. It started off with the rabbit, then it then turned to this thing, and then break time added a fucking horn to hint that it could be a fucking witch beast. Snow Bunny. Right? The name. It was a drill, drill. Uh, no, this is Mick. <laughs> so does that mean? Okay. If we apply the same logic of break time hinting and foreshadowing, if we go to Biko and say, Biko, I am the one, and Biko goes, <laughs> finally, Henshin, Mecha Biko unlocked, and then we're gonna go fight Elsa and shit? I don't think so. That's a bit too much, right? And that's, could this be hinting at something? Is Mecha Biko real? Is B good uh, fucking cyborg? Is there a cyborg B guy? No, fuck. <laughs> Mecha B cool versus the bunnies. <laughs> no, I think there is definitely some foreshadowing, but a lot of red herrings, as in just distractions, right? I don't think this matters. Maybe it does, but like. Oh, man. The snow bunny shit, bro. Dude, what does, what does the English sub sound like? Hold up. Let's listen to the English dub Subaru getting eaten up. I'm interested in this. Mm. 
actually, there isn't gonna be voice acting because he's just gonna be screaming the entire time, but I still wanna hear it. Dude, there's so many bunnies! There are so many bunnies, bro! Very good. The high pitch it went there when you were screaming, very immersive. The bunnies has an interesting thing. Sixteen fifty four. Look at this. Are you looking at this on the bunny's ass? Look at the bunny's ass. Because I remember in season one. This thing. You see the purple halo? The whale had a purple crest thing too. I'm not sure if that fucking matters. I'm like, no, oh, I just... I remember the purple crest thing and the halo thing and the whales always being so cool, but... And we're back. With the million though. Because remember, when he loops... It's like everything is continuous. So it's just like he just got eight alive and then he just woke up and all the fucking phantom pain and like it's all still there. It's just like, oh shit, bro. Always oh, going crazy. It's not your fault, bro. This is just fucking impossible. It's not your fault, bro. You can do this. <laughs> have once again earned the qualification to meet you why because the events leading up to it was what him going fucking crazy and asking why 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 <laughs> echidna hey not bad hey what's going on girl oh but we're special we're special though stand proud subaru you got invited to the witch tea party twice now. Huh? The mental trauma's gone? Right, stimulated the witch's factor, which also means that he can also use authority of sloth and the way that it's gonna manifest to Subaru's personality. And it also, he said like the resistance was stronger, but encouraging stability, okay? The soul would have crumbled to pieces? The soul itself can take damage from his mental anguish. So Echidna is literally helping us so much. Like, I wonder how close our soul was ready to be crumbled in season one if we're assuming that it's this mental anguish from repeated death and suffering that causes the soul to crumble. Thank you. Yeah, if you remember, but you're gonna fucking wipe my memories, bitch. Come on, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ignore it twice. I don't, I don't wanna forget you. Sorry, I wanna remember you, baby. <laughs> Oh god, the unintentional riz, it's working. Uh, uh. See, this is what I'm talking about. Subaru has like these impulse acts where it's just like every time he's like impulsive around Echidna, it just like works so fucking well. He like him he's not playing hard to get, but he's definitely just kind of ignoring her and just doing whatever he wants and somehow it's fucking working. <laughs> She's about to nut. She gush it, dude. What? Oh. Just touch the witch right there, too, bro. I mean, more active impulse. I don't know. Thanks. Unfair. A maiden's heart? <laughs> Just ghost it again. <laughs> So now what happens, I wonder? 
if he drank it again, does this sloth witch factor also get stimulated? And does this resistance or stability get stronger? Like, I wonder if there's like a doubling factor now. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, come on. I think we I think she deserves it. What? Everything. And that's the crazy shit, right? The crazy shit is that she's been locked in here ever since 400 years ago, where, a, where Satala killed, you know, consumed the witches and ravaged the world. She has no understanding of what the Archbishop of Greed is right now. All the outsider information for 400 years ago is literally non existence, unless some people have shown up and then told her about it. She should not know anything about Subaru, yet she does. There's a connection with, of course, with the witch and Subaru. But like, the fact that she said like, oh, you know, your, your progress. Remember I made the example of Orsted, of Orsted knowing like we each character's in different time level about, about like what their progress should be. But like, she fucking knows everything about Sub Subaru. And the crazy shit of all, the fact that when we made a vow, apparently she confirmed that Subaru already had a pre-existing vow, which most likely is the vow that Subaru made with Satala. And most likely he maybe has the witch factor of envy and therefore the authority of envy is the return by death. But at the same time, the memory loss mechanic here is exactly why Subaru doesn't remember Satala at the... I don't know. That's my guess of what's going on though. <laughs> yeah. Does that imply that she knows about- she does know about the rigor, but like... It's a second tea party, but he's in looping. It's- it's- it's hinting that she knows. It's hinting that she knows. It can only mean that she knows. Let's try it. What happens right now in this dreamlike plane? I can return by death. Would Satala interfere? How does that work? Do it. Oh, because she knows her memories. She knows everything about like how we were crying over Amila. She knows everything. It's from the memories, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can return by no, not this time. Not this time. Yeah. She knows. She knows. But like to him, it's the first person he's ever been able to say this to. No one else could ever know. He can't tell anyone. There's a fucking punishment. But finally, there's someone that he can tell. Imagine how much of like a burden is being lifted off his shoulders to have someone like be able to relate to that shit. <laughs> Can I have a hug, Echidna? You've just been alone, bro. And no one would ever listen. No one could ever know. Frozen Bond. Frozen Bond captions. The red fucking letters, bro. I know. Even getting head pats? Fuck Amelia, bro. I love Echidna. <laughs> this... <laughs> like, Echidna is actually our emotional pillar of support this season. It wasn't Rem, it wasn't Amelia. It was Echidna all this fucking time, bro. She knew! 
This is so good. This is so good, bro. She's been the biggest fan, maybe. All the steps. That's right. She's greedy for knowledge. There it is. Name drop. Basically, she is like our therapist, man. She straight up is our fucking therapist. We're literally sitting down on a couch right now and telling her everything that happened in season one. Everything that we could never tell anyone else. And now she can do that for us. And the episode ends with the value of life. Damn. The credits start rolling like some fucking episode 15 shit, man. Oh my god. Today's episode truly, truly was peak. All right. Quick recap. What are the most important things happening right now? I think that this part is still the most insane part of the episode. I know the snow bunny shit was crazy. I know the Garfield transformation. I know Frederick could transform, so it wasn't that much of a surprise. But like the existence of the Tomb of Wisdom and then two grimoires that tells the actual future, two good copies. And then the Gospels, which flood the fucking market. They're defected and seemingly the Archbishops use. Now, I don't know if the one that Subaru carries is a defect or not, but let's keep that in mind as we move forward. To be able to truly tell the future is fucking insane. Biko actually can tell the future. Not really. Her grimoire tells the steps necessary to get to the future. Now, that's another good question. Remember, as soon as we take what's been told from the story as a hard fact is the moment that we're limited in the way that we can predict the future. Let's just for whatever reason assume that what Roswell's saying is a lie. And maybe Biko is also those two copies are fake. I don't fucking know, but this is fucking crazy, man. This is insane. And more hints, more hints that Roswell knows about Subaru's regression. It's not just Echidna that knows. I'm pretty goddamn sure Roswell knows based on the dialogue, even offering another fucking line to say to Biko because he assumes that Subaru already told Biko about Roswell asked a question. And then he says, I am the one, which implies who is exactly Biko waiting for? I have no clue. Someone to save her? From what? What is she suffering from? I mean, she's a fucking shut-in. Should we take the neat route and think about like how she is also is like a shut-in because of lack of... I don't know. I, I don't know. She's stuck in there and we need to override the contract. But like... Ugh, I don't know what the fuck is the deal with Biko and why she's so sad and why she's just there, man. Otto being sacrificed by Garfield. Dude, Garfield low-key fucking pissing me off. Garfield is getting so fucking upset and I get it. That he's supposed to be the protector of the sanctuary, the guardian or some shit and super suspicious. But like, bro, we have enough shit to deal with and you're fucking doing this on top of that. It's annoying. But again, this is good that we know he can do this. I think that he can definitely help us take out Elsa if we can convince him that we're cool. It's just everything hinges on fucking Amelia clearing the trial. Now, <laughs> the snow bunny shit. <laughs> Dude. Because, like, the entirety of the build-up to the snow bunny is... It's just snowing, and the kind of weird soundtrack is playing, and it's very, like, hollow and empty, and we're just chilling. We see a cute bunny, and I'm like, oh, You know, we're suffering so much. Do we finally get, like, a cute pet that's gonna, like, save our soul? No. <laughs> it's gonna fucking destroy our soul. This is probably the most cruel, just torturous way that we've died. Is there any other runs that we've ever died worse than this? No. I don't think so. This, because like, each individual bite nibbling us to fucking death, that's a nightmare, bro. And yes, if we assume that no one is at the sanctuary, maybe the snow bunnies ate them all. I don't know, but these snow bunny fucking witch beasts are fucking next level. But here, Echidna, just when we thought everything is done and no one will be there for us, bro. 
we got Echidna. The Witch of Greed is there for us. She's greedy for our knowledge, and we can finally tell her everything we could never tell anyone. It's like we share a secret. Now, if Satala is aware of this, how jealous would she get? How envious would she get? Remember, she was so fucking envious when we told the secret to Amelia, which is our interpretation, and she killed Amelia. Is she not gonna be pissed at this? I can't- I guess she can't interfere because this is like a kidness domain, but... I wonder if Satala is overhearing this. I don't know, that's really interesting to think about, but... <sighs> Kidna, man. I am the Witch of Greed, the head pads, bro. It's so fucking peak. A kidness so good. I truly see the- I, I, I truly see the hype that is a kidna. And that's it for me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for even more content. And until next time, take care.